Hello. In this video, I create an AI that pilots 2D quadcopters. This is a terrible idea since it's already hard for a human to control these fully manually. Quadcopter control is a very unstable environment and there already are very robust mathematical methods of piloting drones. But I'm still gonna do it. Welcome to controlling drones with AI. Quadcopters are very agile unmanned vehicles that use four propellers that turn really fast and therefore push against the air and create lift. In 2D, there are only two actions that matter when controlling a quadcopter, the lift amplitude and the lift difference. The lift amplitude is the power of both rotors. We use this to fight gravity and control altitude. The lift difference is the difference between the powers of both rotors. If the left rotor turns faster than the right one, the drone will tilt right and move to the right. From this study, we can derive these physics equations and create an environment where we can control a drone using the keyboard. The goal in this environment is popping as many balloons as possible within the time limit. Before we use AI models on this task, we should probably look at the current state of the art when it comes to drone control. Currently, most drones use control theory to move to a waypoint. Control theory is a field of mathematics that uses the error signal between the drone's position and the target position to derive drone actions. A great tool in control theory is the PID controller, where we send the weighted sum of the proportional, derivative, and integral of the error signal as an output. Using PIDs, I can send the position error to derive optimal angle and speed, and then derive the rotor's powers using this key. This is already pretty good. The drone follows waypoints in a robust and careful manner and never crashes. The good part is that this method only takes a few minutes of tuning to work. The bad part is that it's not fast enough. Since the PID values are constants, the drone always has the same strategy regardless of how far the target is. This results in not tilting the drone enough when the target is far away. That's where AI comes in. In this part, we'll use a subfield of AI called reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning is when an agent learns by observing the state of the environment, taking an action, and observing the reward it gets. After training a lot, the agent knows which actions result in the best rewards, and chooses accordingly. But it's not that simple. To make sure that the agent learns the task, we can't just let him play the game like a human. We have to ease the training as much as possible through environment shaping. Environment shaping comes in three steps. Action shaping. We choose which actions the agent can take. The actions should be complete enough so the agent has full capability, but they also shouldn't be too complex to use. Here the action space will be two floats, one for the thrust amplitude and one for the thrust difference. Observation shaping. We also choose what the agent sees at each step of the game. If we ask the agent to learn on images of the game, it will be very difficult for it, as it will have to understand from the image his position and attitude and the target position. Instead, we only give it the necessary float values he needs to play. Distance and angle to target, attitude and velocity. Reward shaping. Choosing when to reward and punish the agent is also important. We want to help the agent understand winning behaviors early on, but we don't want to bias him either. First, we should punish the agent heavily if it crashes, as not crashing will be the first lesson to learn. We can also reward it for surviving. Then, we should punish the agent for being far from the target, so it naturally tries to reach targets. Finally, we should reward it when it reaches a target, as this is the goal of the game. We can finally start training. In the beginning, the agent tries random actions hoping it scores some points. Unfortunately, crashing means a 1000 points punishment. It quickly learns that staying alive is better than dying and finally learns to hover. It then learns to reach one or two balloons, but at a very slow pace. And finally, after many, many episodes, it finally learns to chase multiple targets at a fast rate. After all this training, it's finally time to see which is better, human, control theory, or reinforcement learning. As we can see, the Errol agent absolutely obliterates both me and the Control Fury agent, which is quite impressive, especially considering how unstable the environment is. Anyways, if you want to know more, I am linking in the description the GitHub repo. I even wrote a paper about the project, but since it's not peer-reviewed, take everything in it with a huge grain of salt. Okay, bye.